What is it like to live with an EV? And the all important question, should you buy one? These are hot topics right now, and it does take a certain lifestyle to be able to live with an EV. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing all that. We're here at Brady's of Castle Knock, and they have their Cooper garage opening up really, really soon. But right now, it's under construction behind me. And today, we're gonna to be testing out this, the Cooper Born, and we're gonna be discussing efficiency. Of course, we're gonna be talking about range and the all-important charging. This is the Dundee YouTube channel. I'm David O.C. Let's go for a drive. So the Cooper Born comes in two variants, a 77 kilowatt hour battery, and then this, the 58 kilowatt hour battery, which should be more than enough for us today. That's got a range of about 417 kilometers. The ambient temperature is about 22, 23 degrees, which is absolutely perfect. So we're gonna set sail from here in Castle Knock, and we're gonna do a few different tests along the way. We're gonna drive around town, we're gonna to go on a motorway, we're gonna go on a motorway slowly, and then we're also gonna test, test some fast chargers and then a home charger as well. So we should get a full experience of what it's really like to live with an EV. So we are setting sail. And if we go to the long-term range in this car, now bear in mind, it's been on test drives. People are probably putting their foot down to feel that EV power. It's averaging 13.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So that's your liters per 100 kilometers or your miles per gallon. So we're going to reset that now. And we're gonna take a drive into the city center and see what our range is, see how that efficiency is affected. And then we're gonna take it out on the motorway. So as we set sail, we've got about 310 kilometers range. The claim range of this is with a full charge over 417 kilometers. So we'll see how this all affects all these stats as we drive into town. So as we make our way into town, it's a good time to talk about driving an EV versus a normal car. And it's something I've chatted a lot about on nearly every electric car review on this channel. However, I suppose the biggest differences are it's an automatic gearbox for obvious reasons. So it's a lot easier to drive in that respect. And then I suppose the only other thing that you will notice is there's a thing called regenerative braking. So if I put it in B mode over here, when I take my foot off the accelerator, it will actually use the energy of the car slowing down to recoup power and then extend your range. So it's something that's very strange the first time you drive the car, but as you get into it, it becomes almost second nature. Uh, and I suppose the other thing is power. So this is 204 horsepower. And when you put your foot down, it's very quick off the line. It's very instant and the torque is absolutely huge. So that is definitely the things to look out for. Um, and as we come to a halt now here, I'm not using any brakes. And then just to so kind of get a bit closer, I just have to use an ever so slight, small bit of brakes. But anyway, we'll continue on our journey and we will update you with our stats once we arrive. So we're just at the three arena or the Cooper 1878, a bit of a good tie in there. But I'm averaging about 13.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now the good thing is, I did get around 10 earlier on, but I've had to crank up the AC because it is a scorcher of a day. But now we're gonna head through the port tunnel and we're gonna drive on the motorway at speeds of about 100, maybe even up to 120 kilometers per hour and see how that efficiency compares. So we're now on the M50. I have my cruise control set to 100 kilometers per hour. And I suppose this is kind of where EVs and just a lot of modern cars in general might be different to something that you've had for a few years. There's a lot more tech. So for example, I've got adaptive cruise control. So it judges the speed of the car in front of me and it will slow down when it does and speed up when it does as well. And then on top of that over here, we can switch on lane assist, which just keeps me centered in the lane, stopping me veering out. And it just makes driving on a long journey that little bit easier. But we're on a drive and we're gonna to stick to the speed limit of about 100, it might go up to 120 at times. And then later on, we're gonna see what our stats are there, how much more or less efficient that was. And we'll also catch a charge too. All right, so after a big spin on the motorway and at times doing 120 kilometers per hour, I'm quite staggered. It's a lot more efficient than I expected. We're about the mid 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which we'll sit and do some maths in a moment, but I think that will far exceed the WLTP range, but I'll come back on that. Anyway, now we're just pulling in to the Ionity charger. We're gonna get a quick charge, discuss the prices of that, and of course speeds, and then we'll get back on the road. 
Okay, so I've just done the maths on that, and that means we're gonna get about 447 kilometers, which is more than the WLTP, and that's a mix of driving on the city, but also on the motorway. But now we're gonna get a fast charge. So the price of these we're gonna talk about because it is a little bit more. But to connect up, it's really easy. You just get an app, and then you select your charger, plug it in, and off you go. So as we charge up, it's worth talking about cost because it's very expensive. This here, you're paying 79 cents a kilowatt hour, which is quite frankly, probably the same price, if not more than diesel. These are really only for when you're out and about. You don't want to be relying on fast chargers. You ideally want to have a home charger and we'll get to that later in the video. However, another thing I want to talk about is charge speed because the Cooper Bourne, this can take up to 125 kilowatts, which is loads. However, right now we have a base charge of about 55%. And so we're only getting about 40 to 45 kilowatts, which is quite slow. And how I'm gonna explain that is, imagine you get a really hungry child. They're gonna eat loads at the beginning, really, really quickly, and then they're gonna slow down as they fill up. It's kind of the same with EVs. It's all to do with the state of charge. So if I came in here with 10%, it will be taking on a lot much or a lot faster of a charge than it is now because right now the Cooper Born, it's just not that hungry. But anyway, we're going to stop this charge pretty soon and then we'll continue our journey uh, because we want to talk about home chargers too. So we're back at base now and I want to talk about the wall box behind me because the reality is if you buy an EV, in my opinion, you should live where you have a driveway so that you can have a home charger. And the reason I say that is then you can get basically an overnight charge. So you're gaining seven kilowatts here, which isn't rapid fast, but overnight you'll fill this battery. But more importantly, the cost is drastically cheaper. So during the daytime, using the current national average, which is 41 cents a kilowatt hour, this will cost about 24 euro to fill. However, if you're willing to use the night rate and you can set it to time to charge at night, then it's as little as 11 euro. But then to go one step further than that again, is in some energy plans at the moment, you can actually have free electricity one day a week. So for example, if you choose a Sunday, and you can charge your electric car up free. And with a range of what, what we achieved, which was 447 kilometers, you could actually go for most of your week without charging again. So you could theoretically drive free of charge. So there you go, that is driving day to day and living with an EV. Now there's certainly a lot of variables there, but we did try to test it the difference between driving on the motorway and driving around town. And I actually expected town to be a lot more efficient because generally speaking it is, but the Cooper Bourne's obviously quite aero efficient or aerodynamic. What's more is today, obviously it's very warm. So the battery is gonna be a lot more efficient to operate. Although the drawback of that is we did have to crank up the AC the entire time we were using the car. Um, but yeah, my advice is if you have a home charger, then you're absolutely laughing at one of these. And if you do have any questions, please make sure to ask in the comments below. But for now, thank you so much to Braves of Castle Knock. Their Cooper Garage is going to be opening up in August. They are business as usual, of course, right now. But look forward to seeing that because the way Cooper do things, it's very, very different and really, really nice. We hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please make sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to search for Cooper's for sale here, then hit the link up there. We'll see you in the next one.